It was about 30 years ago. Billy was hiding out in an abandoned farm near Stinking Springs. I threw in with the kid because the man I had sworn vengeance on was riding with Billy's enemies. But before I tell you why I want that some bitch dead, let me tell you what happened that day. I was heading back to the hideout when suddenly I had this funny feeling. Funny, haha? -ha. No, Steve. The other kind of funny. You heard Pat. You need to stay here and keep an eye on the road. That's not fair. We're missing all the fun. I knew those two morons would never let me through. I had no choice. Who's that? Is he with us? Was it Pat Garrett's posse? Oh yeah. I heard the shots and I knew I had to move fast. Fire and will. Spread out. Garrett and his army of deputies had surrounded the entire homestead. I decided to help Billy and the boys out a bit. So that's just what I did. Mexico was paying for the kid's apprehension. Garrett was able to hire every gun hand at Lincoln County. Still, one of them reached the water tower. Not a bad idea. It would be a turkey shoot from up there. Luckily, these shooters Garrett hired weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. Let's do this. A lot of them were saddle tramps or sod busters or drunken drifters looking to make it. Friendly voice yelling at me from the window. Back door! We got we'll cover you! Drop aiming, you idiot! Truth be told, Is things weren't much water? better behind the house. Tell them. <laughs> I cut their numbers in half, <sighs> but that just made the ones that were left twice as mad. for their lack of skill with a seemingly endless supply of ammo. Oh. It was a bit of a slog, but I finally fought my way around the back of the house. And like that, I was You'll inside. Dead, None bastard. the worse for wear. I passed Dirty Dave, 
And upstairs, I found Billy Get and Charlie Bull. Get in a trap! Billy looked at me and said, About time, amigo! Grab a gun and get to the window! Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. Anyway, we were surrounded by dozens of deputized shooters who wanted to do us harm. like flies, but they just kept on coming. Where the hell did I get? Let me roll the action! That's when Charlie got hit. They're catching us in a crossfire, shouted Billy. Get to the other side! I personally put down, but it was pretty clear, even to Billy, that maybe discretion was the better part of valor. What's that mean? It means that it was time to cut and run. They got a Gatlin, Billy shouted. Get the horses and bring them around back. I'll draw their attention. Those sons of bitches are done for. He directed that order at me, and I thought, why the hell do I have to do it? Many would have fled in my place. But I had that false sense of invincibility that many young men have. Like Jack here. What are you saying, old man? Jack, he's just joshing with him. Yeah, he better be. Mr. Graves, please continue. Please, call me Silas, ma'am. Now, uh, where was I? You were heading for the barn. of fallen foes. Sounds like Garrett hired a whole regiment of hired guns. Yeah, and just when I thought I was done with them, more of these hapless bastards would pop up. Finally, I had the stables within my reach. After the fight, maybe we could treat ourselves to some fried chicken. And that's when I met Sheriff Pat Garrett. I read that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, sir. That backstabbing bastard with that tacked-on tin star. You read that in a dime novel? It said he showed no fear as he took your measure with eyes like a rattlesnake.
pretend that you killed him in a fair fight. <laughs> Is that what that Penny Dreadful said? No, boy. That ain't what I meant when I said I met Pat Garrett. So let me start again. I finally reach those damn stables. Stepped inside, and <laughs> last thing I heard was Garrett's voice. That's not Billy. And go on, how did it end? End? Boy, that was just the beginning. So what happened? Did Garrett arrest you? It's important to know that I was only riding with Billy so I could find the bastard I was after. He was with John Kinney's gang, and they were sworn enemies of Billy's regulators. Why were you after him? I owed that son of a bitch a bullet for what he had done to me and mine. Instead, all I got for myself was a goddamn death sentence. Luckily, it was right around then that I heard Billy make his move. He shot Jim Bell and a few other guards as he made his getaway. Later, they wrote that some lady friend planted a pistol for him in the privy. What the papers didn't say is that Billy helped me escape, too. My first order of business was finding a firearm. Luckily, I located Deputy Bob Ollinger's mean-ass shotgun. I saw Billy through the window, and he yelled that I should take to the rooftops to make my escape. So I did. Anybody see Billy? The kids escaped raised a huge ruckus. Oh. Hell yeah. That scattered gun was like a double-barreled howitzer. It could blow a man clear off his feet. You hardly had to aim the damn thing. Guards were everywhere looking for it. jump from roof to roof like a damn alley cat. I followed the planks where I could, but... Some of that wood was slippery as hell. The whole town was up in arms. And suddenly, I was a fugitive. So that bastard you were after, what did he do? He did me and my family a grievous harm. But I knew if I was ever gonna find him, I would need to get my ever-loving ass out of there. I tried to be stealthy and sneak my way past. This town doesn't have a moment's faith. You! But hell if they weren't all waiting for me. Ah! Apparently, some of them thought I was Billy. You hooligan. Ah! Ah, you yellow bastard! He's in town somewhere! Me and the kid shared a certain similarity in build and color. Surrender yourself! I was just glad I had Deputy Bob's mean ass shotgun. They're shooting in the street! You won't get away with this! Get your headstone! There's children here. 
So much lead was whizzing by my head, it was like everyone in Lincoln wanted to put me in the ground. I knew I needed to find a horse. Though I never did have a great fondness for those four-legged grass eaters. Smelly, sweaty, ungrateful beasts. We prize it too high, you ask me. Kid while you were busy getting shot at. Gone. And that's when it occurred to me why Billy set me free. So I could be a hapless decoy and draw attention while he snuck out of town. I knew if I made it out of there in one piece, no one would put a price on my head. Because everybody in Lincoln would be dead? No. Because they all thought I was Billy. And all that blame would fall on him. Meanwhile, Deputy Bob Ollinger was organizing a posse to put me down. He was already a mean son of a bitch, but he was doubly pissed that I stole his mean-ass shotgun. Anyway, it was me or them, and the only way forward led me straight to perdition. But the cards were dealt, and I had no choice but to play them. Save your ass, taking out Bob Ollinger the way he did. Billy didn't kill Bob. Well, sure he did. He dispatched him right after he shot Deputy Bell. No, sir. Because Bob came right up behind me, angry as hell that Billy had lit out. Hello, Bob. I said, I think you better let me go. And he says, I don't think so, boy. Not with my shotgun. So we stood there in the middle of the street. Eyeball to eyeball. He intended to kill me, and I knew I had no choice but to defend myself. I killed him in a fair fight. Everybody saw I had no damn choice. Well, 
Lincoln got a mite depopulated that day. That Garrett gunned down Billy three months. So where'd you go after Lincoln? Mexico. So was the bastard you were after now riding with the cowboys? Roscoe Bob Bryant was his name. Oh. But no, this time it was a different bastard I was after. The aforementioned Mr. Ringo. I came upon them robbing a stagecoach, which wasn't surprising being they were such murderous thieves and bastards. The bandits wore red scarves, so I knew they worked for the old man. Over there! There! <laughs> I did my best to help this poor bastard. Moments later, the attackers were dead. And I checked the stagecoach to see how many passengers were still breathing. None. It was then I wondered if the rocks were in hiding more bandits. Was that all of them? Or did I just hit the rear guard? I quickly got my answer. They attack from on high like Apache's off the field. They would appear in great numbers from above and rain down lead on their hapless enemies' heads. Making use of the high ground and whatever else they had. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere. And there never seemed to be an end to them. Hold on, were you attacked by Apaches? W what happened to the cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's cowboys attacked me Apache style. I was in a pitched battle, but I was holding my own against an overwhelming enemy force. Going? See, at the time, I was still pretty green, but often blundered in regrettable situations. But I just kept shooting at anything I could see up in those damn rocks. I didn't see Ringo, but I knew he was with the Cowboys. He and Roscoe Bob had done me a dreadful wrong. I was determined to have my revenge. But to get to Ringo, I knew I'd have to fight my way past these other assholes first. Unfortunately, I was running out of ammo. Another perfect example of my relative inexperience as a hunter of men. I immediately knew that a tactical retreat was called for, as my vengeful fury was much less impressive without the bullets to back it up. Finally, they managed to corner me. Trapped as I was, the odds of my survival seemed pretty slim. Luckily, serendipity was on my side as I suddenly spotted a way out of my predicament. I ran ahead as if the devil himself was after me. Bullets were whizzing by my ears, but I wasn't about to roll over and die. I just kept running like there was no tomorrow. Because there wouldn't be if Clanton and his men caught up with me. As I was scurrying around those caves, I thought, what was I thinking, going up against a gang like this? No one will ever fight you here. I just kept running, not knowing where the hell I was going. And that's when something miraculous happened. Like mana from heaven. I found the desiccated remains of what looked like an Apache warrior. 
The old weapon next to him supplied me with some much needed ammunition. Bat Masterson once told me it was more important to be lucky than good, and he would know. And imagine my surprise when I found a fistful of dynamite to go along with that ammo. That stroke of good fortune evened the odds and bolstered my confidence. It was time to turn the tables. Time for the prey to become the predator. Time for the hunted to become the hunter. All right, Jesus, we get it. They were right where you wanted them. That's right, Jim. I was done running. And the old man's boys were not expecting that. No, sir. I came at them like a wildcat. My fury knew no bounds. It was finally time for that old man to pay for his sins. I yelled out at the top of my lungs. Clinton, I'm coming for you! A little stealth might have made more sense, to be perfectly honest. Because that old fool had a gallon gun and enough bullets to last him till kingdom come. But I knew I could not let that deter me. Not if I was to find and kill Ringo. I needed to get that old man off that gun. Everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon, but it was just me. Cowboys made it out of there alive and told Ike and Billy Clanton that it wasn't a Mexican who took their father's life that day. They just assumed it was one of the Earps, and that little misunderstanding eventually led to that legendary gunfight at the Old K Corral. A few weeks after that dust-up at the OK Corral, I was still after Johnny Ringo. 
I had tracked him and the cowboys to their hideout at a sawmill, and they were loaded for bear. So what exactly did Johnny Ringo do to piss you off? Well, him and that other bastard. Roscoe Bob Bright? Yep. They both deserve to die, and I promise I'll tell you why. Herb's coming! Get ready, boys. But first, I need to tell you about the cowboy's new boss, Curly Bill Brocious. Curly Bill took charge of the Cowboys upon the old man's demise. And after that gunfight at the OK Corral, the Clantons got revenge. So they murdered Morgan Earp and grievously wounded his older brother, Virgil. Wyatt and Doc went on what became known as the Vendetta Ride, hunting those outlaws down. So when I showed up, that's who they thought I was. Killers around every corner, all wearing red bandanas. That's how the cowboys identified each other. And I was beginning to wish I had one myself. God damn you! But I wasn't about to let Ringo walk away unscathed. And that's what drove me forward. They say that Ringo was infernally fast. I hardly saw anyone faster, boy. Certainly not Wyatt Earp. That man was all hat and no cap. Uh, Earp wasn't much of a match for him, but Doc Holliday might have taken him. Uh, that longer should have kept his nose out of it. They never charged anyone for the murder of Morgan Earp. But everybody knew that Curly shot him in the back. That was common knowledge. Yeah, maybe so. But Ringo had nothing to do with it. He was just being loyal to a friend. Is that what you call it? Being loyal? Excuse me, sir. I have a question. What's that, Dwight? After old man Clanton died, why didn't his son take over the Cowboys? Because Ike Clanton was dumber than a box of rocks and a yellow belly to boot. Now, where was I? Taking down the entire cowboy gang single-handed. Indeed I was, Jack. Those boys had good cover.
on, smoke that some bitch! everywhere, piles of lumber, and God knows what else for people to hide behind. That really was one hell of a sawmill. Quite an impressive operation. And where was Curly Bill? Did you see him? I'm about to get to that, Ben. Patience. I'm painting a picture here. There was this beautiful waterfall and a crystal clear stream that led to a verdant valley that was truly... Consider your picture painted. What happened next? Well... Finally, the bastards that were still alive made a last stand. Curly Bill, Johnny Ringo, and his compadres took off into the lumber yard, and I followed after. Saying they were <sighs> cowardice was not in Ringo nor Curly Bill's nature. No, sir. I never said they were running scared. They just wanted me out of the open. Oh, oh, you Just gave me no choice but to take his life. But Ringo was nowhere to be found. I knew you didn't kill Ringo, because he was found dead in a different location altogether. To this day, his killer is still unknown. Indeed. It took me a few months before I finally tracked his ass to West Turkey Creek Canyon. Sir, I always thought that Doc Holliday was the one that killed him. Sorry I had to ruin the legend for you, boy. But the legend ain't always true. Doc Holliday had nothing to do with the death of Johnny Ringo. I was paid a healthy bounty for Ringo and Curly Bill, and realized...
I knew I needed resources if I was going to track down Roscoe Bob Bryant. And hunting plumber looked like a good way to get rich quick. As the local vigilantes exposed him as the leader of the bandits and put a generous price on his head. Plummer rallied his gang to plunder one last gold mine before making their escape. And that's where I thought I'd it find It makes him. me nervous standing so close to all these goddamn barrels of gunpowder. Why would you be nervous? No one has the cojones to come after us. As my late father pointed out to me more than once, God made men, but Samuel Colt made them equal. I knew that dynamite wasn't mine, so I decided the polite thing would be to return it. It was the biggest gold rush since Sutter's Mill in 48. Unfortunately, prospectors weren't the only ones drawn to those riches. There were thieves, killers, robbing travelers, and hijacking gold shippers. Like those that ran with Plummer. Some were just regular folks I knew from town, drawn by greed and easy pickings. Charlie Crow, the blacksmith. I'm putting you down. James, who worked in the stable. Sam and Jeremiah Barber, the butcher's sons. Ordinary citizens who lived a double life. Of course, the rest were veterans of the Civil War. Stone Cold killers trained on the bloody fields of Shiloh and Antietam. Plummer had a lot of men on his payroll. A hell of a lot. That son of a bitch pretended to protect the public with one hand while stealing them blind with the other. He set up a defensive perimeter which I had no idea how to breach. outnumbered and in way over my head, but I was too damn stubborn and stupid to realize. They must have thought I was dead, or had some kind of death wish, seeing as there were barrels of gunpowder everywhere. I thought I was some kind of hero. I finally made it past and headed on to meet my destiny. But first, I had something I needed to figure out. I had a few ideas on how to get into that mine, but once I made my decision, I knew there was no turning back. So my first thought was to enter the nearest mine portal. I saw an entrance. Made sense. It was the quickest way in, but that also made it more dangerous. 
as there would undoubtedly be enemy pickets posted along the way. Take him down! Besides, once you enter a mine like that, it's easy to get all turned around. Some of those shafts could be as deep as hell. A single stumble or misstep can easily end in a deadly plunge to oblivion. Reflexes often make up for a lack of common sense. Luckily, I was never one to be easily bushware. I would just need to be careful not to blow myself to kingdom come. that gunpowder and dynamite everywhere, a body has to know what he's shooting at. All it takes is one tiny spark, and boom. Take that asshole out! You must be As a boy, I always loved the 4th of July. bullet could have turned that mine into a dad blasted too. I freely admit that my plan of attack was not just moronic, but clearly in sight. It's a good thing that I abandoned that ridiculous plan before I even tried it. Instead, I spotted a ladder. A way into the mine from the opposite side. It was a long way around, but that approach seemed more sensible at the time. Of course, being I had a problem with heights, that scaffolding scared the bejesus out of me. Climbing down that ladder required some caution. Because even though I had a younger man's reflexes, no man can dodge a damn bullet while climbing down a rickety ladder. I needed to make a leap of faith. I was determined not to give up, however. That Sheriff Plummer seemed quite the despicable character. When the vigilantes discovered what the Sheriff was up to, people were outraged. That 10,000 they put on his head would go a long way to help me find old Tom. It made it my mission to settle that score come hell or high water. But first, I would have to make a choice. Take the elevator, or climb the ladder.
I wanted to use the element of surprise. Plus, I figured I could use the exercise. I was warmed up already, so what the hell? What are you looking for? Plummer was a mad dog killer, and the people of Nevada City deserve a bet. Nevada City? Well, I thought Plummer met his maker in Bannock, Montana. Right, well, he was a sheriff of both places at one time or another, but that's neither here nor there. The point was, taking him down would save a lot of lives, including my own. Unhinged, and I could see right away that this was going to take some doing. I'm going to medieval on your ass. 